Alrighty, here we are at the TF1260. Um, can't believe we got here already. Um, TF1260 is the 060 card for the Amiga 1200. I do like my Amiga 1200. It's not my favourite Amiga, but it's up there in the in the list of them. Um, the TF1260, very much a sort of sideways port of the um, 360. Um, <coughs> The Amiga 1200 and the Amiga and the Amiga CD CD32 are very similar machines, um, architecturally and and the pinouts and electrically and all that sort of thing, the bus protocols, all that sort of stuff, almost identical, slight ever so slight differences which I won't go into, but um, mostly to do with sort of how reliable the edge connectors are and so forth, but um, and how the keyboard works, but yeah, there we go. Um, this is the Rev Zero. This is the f the first iteration of it. I did it in 2019. I remember doing the revised iteration in a in a hotel while I was on holiday in in Christmas 2019, um, which was you know, sort of the last holiday we had before before COVID came along, unfortunately. Um, very much, um, as I say, very much a, a derivative of this. You can see the between. Them the left hand side, so the right hand side of the boards are pretty much identical. Uh, where things get different is where the this uh, CPLD has been placed, it has been moved over there, but it mostly does exactly the same function. Um, the um, ESP header is obviously missing on this one, and I don't need to put a clock port because there is a clock port on the Amiga 1200 already. So, a few more spare pins, which were um, uh, kind of they were kind of put there, given things to do that uh, it later turned out I didn't need to have anything to do with them, so um, yeah, it'll work. The very first board had a little issue with the reset. We fixed that. I believe there's a patch resistor somewhere on here. Uh, let's see if I can find it. There we go. That was resistor was patched on. And I slightly changed that for the next revision. Um, design decisions with this board, um, I did speak to uh, Chucky Gang about whether to put the CPU on the top or the bottom and the kind of overwhelming answer was put it on the top um, because putting it on the bottom is stupid because you you, you won't get um, you won't manage to get your heat dissipated off that properly um, you, you can't put a fan underneath it the putting it on the top has a problem in that you know the you can't put a, a heat sink on it without the keyboard clashing with it but you you know you could sock you could um, I suppose you could decide to, to solder your um, CPU directly and I haven't done that and I don't recommend you do it and then you can put in like an angled um, um, you can you can mill down a, a, a heat sink and do that um, but it's kind of the design limitations of the I mean, you know you're putting some you're basically putting something that's a source of a massive amount of heat in a space that wasn't really designed for it um, the, the other thing is I do really need to get that many connectors, connections along that edge and I really fought and fought and fought and fought to get, I mean, the millimetres, this was millimetre um, perfect. This actual revision of the card is too big, it doesn't fit, that was all that was wrong with it, it was five millimetres, um, five mil too big to fit in a standard case and the reason it was that was because these connectors or five mil longer. So if you put a normal connector on here, um, it would work fine. But the new connectors that we got um, didn't didn't let you do that. So yeah, um, this card will clock up to 100 megahertz. Um, some guys have had it more than that, but it's, I'm not gonna. You know, you'd have to you'd have to be putting um, you'd have to be putting uh, other crystals on there to get that uh, like 26, 27 megahertz crystals. Um, just a quick look at the, the speed again, um, 70 times the speed of a Nimbus 600 and I've had that to 141 when I clock it up at, uh, at, um, at 100, this is only clocked at uh, 50 at the moment. Um, in here I'm going to have a quick goosey gander, you can see the, this is my own personal Amiga and my own personal uh, TF1260, the one I actually kind of use moderately for day-to-day -day use. 
some insulting messages on there. Um, Nakshnoksha Kenya Pokemon, which means you don't like it, kiss my ass. Um, and obviously the obligatory. That's the way we do it in the Western Isles. And there's a few others. Speed limit 106. Well, I suppose if ever I was going to explain where the 106 megahertz came from, I should do it in this video. The speed limit of 106 refers to a song by Pete and Diesel called Column Dan's Transit Van, where he talks about driving at 106 miles an hour. So I kind of just stuck that on there as a, as a sort of funny. Um, any other things? There's probably other ones on here. Probably some insulting remarks about Chucky that he hasn't found yet. Probably he sometimes finds them under the, the microscope and gets quite angry with me and sends me insulting messages. Uh, yeah, the other thing about this card was there was a software controllable fan on it. Um, I remember um, Chucky asking me to do that and it runs off the 12 volt line, it's switchable. Um, I think possibly that resistor is under spec, it might need to change uh, to get the right, the right behaviour out of it. And yeah, and some slight differences between the Rev, the Rev 1 and the Rev 0, where that on the Rev, um, on the Rev 1, I don't think I had these resistor networks. Sorry, the Rev 0, I didn't have resistor networks. And I just added them down to damp down some, some, uh, some quite long traces that had some ringing on them, so I thought I'd damp that down. Um, I added a resistor to be able to tune the clock if there's any ringing, and that seems to work quite nicely as well. And there's the standard um, sort of software controllable clock setup. Um, one thing I... Yeah, and so there's an IDE interface, um, and Eric uh, Hemming, um, kindly bought a driver for that so it's known as EHI that's what EHI stands for Eric Hemming eyed um, it was he was gonna call it TF eyed and I insisted on calling it EHI and because it was like well no you got dude you did the work so you get the name you get to have it named after you so why not um, yeah I think that's everything Um I've just realized this is one that's still I've not covered not cleaned the flux off it so I should probably go and get the flux out um, yeah, I think that's everything. And you know, it's been a very successful card, very popular. A lot of people have had it. Um, it's now open file, so you can make it yourself if you want. Um, what can I say? It's the standard chips, the same as all the other boards, really. Um, clearly a fake uh, CPU on this one, but there you go. Um, yeah, decent performance off the ID interface. Um, very fast RAM, just like the 360, I think. Um, and, you know, it works at burst up to 100 megahertz in burst. So you're getting potentially sort of 80, 80 odd mega, um, megabytes a second and the same sort of seven megabytes a second uh, AGA chipset speed that you would expect. Um, that's that's basically the max you're ever gonna get out of the AGA chipset, unfortunately, because it's not that great. Uh, anyway. Um, yeah, so I think that's everything and I think we've reached the end of the line with cards that I've released No, I haven't I've got one more so there'll be one more tomorrow so um, be sure to subscribe if you want to get that one and uh, Give me a like if you like the video and as always take care and have a good one